Hi, Shamil. How are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm pretty good, thank you. Thank you for finding time for a small oh, talk about technologies. That's fine. You know, uh, it's yeah, like every, everybody, yeah, everybody's uh, sitting at home right now. So technologies are doing great job. Today we can see the rise of different technologies for video conferencing, for messaging, Slack, Zoom, and other companies on the rise. So it's kind of good. Um, and you know, yeah, hopefully they will survive the traffic. Actually, <laughs> yeah. I hope so. Yeah, that actually was my next question. I was uh, flicking through your recent uh, article. Okay. among the resources about 6G. So I think that uh, the rise of uh, video conferencing technologies, uh, they're going to affect traffic a lot. Mm -hmm. And this kind of thing, like uh, I actually um, bumped into your article about 6G technologies. So uh, okay. what is the, like, the perception? What made you uh, write about 6G? Like I've, I've never heard too much about 6G. I know it's kind of a future. But what made you uh, think about 6G and what made you write the article about 6G? Yeah, okay, that's a good question. Well, actually, um, car some of the current uh, or recent estimations actually show that the traffic will increase in the next decade almost two orders of magnitude. So they estimate it to be a few hundred times larger than in compared to today, to our recent days. That's the first thing. And the second thing is the we are all keeping an eye on the modern technology now, like IE, like virtual reality, and all those uh, kind of technologies to be applicable. They, they need to be supported by a very nice connectivity, which should be all those fancy parameters like latency times and response and speed and so on. So that's the first thing, because at the moment, 5G is on the way and it will probably partially solve the question. However, uh, not up to the point, and it will be enough maybe for the next few years. But if you're speaking about the decade, or maybe, who knows, maybe five years from now, then it will not be enough. And the 6G is somehow the, the way to, to address this challenge effectively. Uh, and obviously now it's uh, under, under the development. So it's, so it's more like R and D stage rather than the implementation okay. stage. And since we don't have enough, like sufficient five G in place, so mm -hmm. do you think that four G is insufficient? And, and if it's not insufficient, for what kind of things? Well, four G is sufficient at the moment for like for the most of the current applications. Uh, but the the key word here, I guess, is the current because. Well, um, with the time, uh, all those VR and IE and autonomous driving things will not be just uh, just the research papers or just uh, somehow the working prototypes. It would be more or less like a daytime uh, routines. And to make it possible, we just need the better connectivity with a low latency and we need to support the mobility with the enough speed. So that's that's the key point. And the 6G is also a bit step forward in terms of what is called the, the Internet of Everything. So it's also a concept which is gaining momentum at the moment. Because uh, yeah, everything connects to everything, meaning that we, we now all already have these kind of smart sensors which are working on the both ways or which can communicate with some servers. So they need to be supported. If we uh, scale this amount over the next years, that the the connectivity will not be enough. And actually, we already can see that 4G, given that this current uh, coronavirus situation, it's already caused some problems with the traffic and with the delays. So we all, we all can experience that already. So it should be something. 5G, well, 5G solves the story, but just partially, it's, uh, it will be available thing over the next maybe i don't know maybe a few years okay. but again so, with, so, speaking about the decade we definitely need to find some, something else so basically you're talking about that like 5g is going to be, be sufficient for something and it, it's uh, under its way um you know i'm traveling a lot um right. usually yeah, right. i'm talking to different people and also in our industry telematics in iot um there are lots of various manufacturers uh, European manufacturers of IoT and GPS hardware, um, you know, and, um, you know, the last um, exhibition in Los Angeles, 
Mobile mm-hmm. World Congress yeah, yeah, was yeah, also uh, devoted to 5G. And you know, but it's kind of um, surprisingly that um, the manufacturers and the vendors of GPS hardware, they're not very, so optimistic about 5G because uh, there are several factories. Uh, one of the factories is that there is enough infrastructure yet for 5G. This is the first factor. The second one is the application of 5G technology. So as far as I know, like in our industry, um, even like 4G uh, hardware has been um, introduced not that long ago. And and um, actually, I can see the rise of 4G hardware or devices, GPS devices on the market, but still, um, there are not so many countries um, that switched from 2G to 3G. You definitely know that initiative by yeah, most yeah. countries, sure. by, by, mm-hmm. by good economies, you know, uh, that uh, developed economies, when they abandoned 2G connectivity and made everybody to switch to 3G. And it was kind of painful. It was kind of expensive for most of the companies because when you have um, the hardware already in place and already working and you make business to switch to buy new hardware. So it's still... A, you know, a question of uh, the investments you have to do, you have to deal with. So, and, uh, you know, I, I think like 5G is going to benefit to autonomous driving, artificial intelligence and VR and AR technologies, definitely. Yeah, indeed. But, it will. Uh, right. Speaking about some innovations, those innovations. But when we speak about the scalability of any technology, it seems to be very expansive at the first stage of implementation in the world. So what's like kind of, like how do you think and how long will it take XG to be adopted? Like, let's say like 50 more and more will definitely adopt it. Well, yeah, that's a good question. Basically to make the 6G, let's say alive, it, it costs a lot of, uh, well, a lot of political agreements, a lot of protocol development. And obviously all those uh, connectivity or let's say network bands should be uh, successfully, let's say, implemented and discussed. Plus all the infrastructure, all those uh, base stations. So it should be fully ready and complete. And uh, in terms of bands, uh, people th- thinking about the terahertz connectivity and about all those like mobile stations or like massive base stations and the small ones as well. So it's it's a huge challenge to the current infrastructure and it is, it's a huge challenge to 5G already because even if in the next, say, couple of years, 5G will become really worldwide and uh, affordable, then on the, uh, on the sake of 6G, it should be modified, it should be changed and many of those things should be, uh, m- many of those technological changes should be related to that. So it, it's, it's pretty hard, even though uh, the 6G, like latency time, they promise it to be about a millisecond, then, well, the current, cur- current bands and current infrastructure should be changed a lot. So I guess, I guess in this kind of sense, the research estimations saying that we will absolutely need the 6G in the next decade, I think the decade is a, is a proper time. Because what could happen is if 5G will be delayed according to the current situation or some, some, other, some, other, some other cases, then 6G should kind of jump in. And it also would be quite challenging. Plus, and do, do to you think, think about do you the think fallback as well. Some of the countries, Okay, and do you think that some of the countries, like, um, there are not so many, some of the countries, they are not even right now talking about 5G, so if we take some of the emerging economies, uh, they're still, like, you know, they haven't implemented, like, even, like, 4G properly, uh, and, you know, like, so, so, and there are other countries that are working on 5G implementation mm-hmm. for widespread use on their markets, and the, there is like different, there are several approaches. You know, some of the countries, they can just wait for mm-hmm. 5G technologies to be appropriately implemented in the market and then they can jump in. Or do you think that they're going to follow the trend and they're going to implement or adopt 5G technology, 5G connectivity? Or are they going to just switch straight to 6G? We have seen several examples in the world. True, yeah. All those 4G LTE kind of story, yeah. Well, I guess it's possible, but that's it, it's a bit it's a bit tricky here because 
if you think about implementation of the 5G and your infrastructure is not ready yet or you're like, well, the financial aspects are not ready yet, so it's not affordable uh, for, for the country. Uh, and then you're speaking, uh, speaking about the 6G, then you need to keep in mind the, wh wh why, wh why you need such, a, such a nice latency times and speeds and the connectivity. Because if, the if there are proper application around on the governmental level, and then if the 5G infrastructure is really just on the way, it's not implemented completely, then maybe it could be a nice thing to jump to 6G. But again, it should be fully available. All those protocols should be properly written and all the political and business regulations should be around already. So it's, it, it's quite hard. Maybe... Yeah, maybe it's possible, but I guess it's very, <laughs> it's kind of a unique cases or unique scenarios and it should be all those, all, um, well, yeah, well, yeah all, all those cases and applications should be around already and okay. they should be solidly uh, implemented. All right. And, uh, you know, uh, since we are all the same, in the same situation, like um, related to coronavirus and COVID, do, what, how do you think the current situation will affect the development of this technology of 6D technology do you think it's going to postpone or do you think it's going to accelerate the development of 6G do, i mean like for, in other words do you think that it's going to revolutionize or it's going to this is it the right momentum for digital transformation to 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 a more faster to a faster digital transformation in the world yeah that's a good your question opinion? Dennis. well um it could be a few scenarios here, but I guess given that this 6G technology, it's uh, quite technological wise. I mean, if you think that, if you think technological wise, it will entail a lot of meta materials, so-called meta materials development and uh, a lot of development in the has been. Plus it's pretty much uh, all things related to technological aspects of the frequency bands and all the implementation of those small and uh, massive large MIMO, so these kind of large base stations. So it's a lot of the things entailed. Plus, um, well, 6G connectivity speed will allow the certain very fancy things like, uh, for, for example, like distance surgery, and those medicine and the proper VR, proper autonomous driving. So I think given that the, in a way, this coronavirus is like a lesson to the world that we, we, we should uh, think about the consequences. And we should think about how Mm, how 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 well we prepare to that, and how well we can make those connected applications uh, affordable and alive. So that's basically that means that I guess and I hope that it it will be a acceleration point. So it will accelerate rather than be sort of postponed because the the importance of connectivity and importance of survival the network under the hot traffic uh, loads it it's clearly a kind of an issue now and it should be kept in mind so i guess 6g as a technology it will take quite time but 6g as a way towards will result on a lot of the kind of entailed technology to be sort of delivered and to be implemented in the current station in the current network so okay yeah, I, I believe All right, it thanks for that and you know i get i guess uh my, maybe my final question about 6g mm -hmm. so um what particular benefits, how we particularly can benefit from 6G technology? I mean, like, you know, every time um, people, the world is talking about technologies, and they're making some research and development, you know, and of course, new technology is kind of expensive and they're being um, developed in Silicon Valley or some, somewhere else or some in other institutions. And when it comes to scalability to the mm -hmm. public, so it takes a little bit different time. So we, we, we could see like different examples. Like, you know, when everybody's talking about new technologies and then you can see it's application, mass application, for example, in the Middle East, in Dubai, yeah, like yeah, smart yeah. cities, you know, smart technologies. And, but what particular benefits, how we can particularly benefit from 6G? What's your opinion? That, that's true. So I think uh, the first direct, um, direct kind of beneficial or a few beneficial effects is as far as it will be faster connectivity, lower latency times, all those applications uh, regarding to the VR and autonomous driving and this telemedicine. So, I mean, I guess the most beneficial sectors will be maybe 
public health, transportation, and all those mobile communications, businesses, VR, and, and media as well. And th that's the first kind of uh, first set of benefits. So it will be faster, more uh, applicable, and it will be like real. It will not be uh, some, how to say, some conversations or just some marketing. It will be, it will be, it finally became a real applications. And the second thing is, uh, yeah, some, some, some sort of applications uh, behind that. It's a, uh, it's a basic story now. So all those protocols, materials, antennas, and base stations, and connectivity, frequency bands, and so on, they are under development now. And it, I mean, it's the question of uh, computation thing. It's a question of uh, materials, electronics, and bands, and so on. So it occasionally it will be some benefit from that side because al along the way, will definitely it definitely will be some some back applications. So as far as uh, part of that, like electronics or like antennas will be developed, it could be obviously modernized or used for something else. It's a question of, I guess it's probably a question of how, how fundamental science will benefit All the right. society. It's similar to that. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, Shamil. Um, thanks for actually for your time and thanks for sharing your opinion. Uh, thanks for uh, about 6G development it was a great pleasure. I hope that next time um, you're going to share some other ideas and your thoughts about new technologies. Thank sure. you so much again. Um, have a great day. Stay safe. Yeah, stay safe. Stay and see you soon. Have a good day as well. Thanks a lot. Thank Cheers. you. Bye -bye. Thanks. Cheers. Bye bye.